Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to a Fognac Island off the coast of southern Alaska. This area is a temperate rainforest covered in the dense undergrowth of ferns and other bushes and plants that commonly close visibility to just a few yards. A very dangerous range to surprise, or be surprised, by a brown bear, especially one that is bent on revenge. The ground consists of a thick, moist layer of duff and moss, which can conceal even the largest of animals' footfalls from being heard, including those that belong to humans. Brothers Luke and Josh Randall worked at the Afognak Wilderness Lodge, with many years of experience stalking in this area in search of the giant brown bears the island is renowned for. The brothers had set out to find another gargantuan predator and enjoy the environment they so loved. They had led their client across the scenic landscape and had glassed and observed for the better part of the day. They had seen a few bears, but were looking for a particularly large-sized bear for this client. After all, if a hunter is going to spend several thousand dollars in travel, permit, and licensing, as well as guide fees, they want to bring home a trophy animal that they can be proud of. The men spotted a giant bear later in the day and watched it for some time before deciding it would be perfect. The brothers and their hunting client reviewed the layout of the area and decided on a route that would keep them concealed. A concealed approach is a must for fatal shot placement on an animal of this size and violent potential. This would preclude a shot from a long distance due to the potential of wounding the animal and reducing a humane, clean kill and harvest. The brown bears on this island are extremely robust, with their bodies featuring very thick hide draped over a second layer composed of fat and gristle designed to protect them from each other's claws and teeth during battle. Everyday life of these giant bears consists of claiming and defending breeding and feeding areas, so these protective layers are a must for their survival. Beneath this sheath of armor, they also have a thick, dense layer of muscle wrapped around very dense bone. Their protective body structure has been known to stop bullets from penetrating into their vital organs, so shot placement has to be perfect to take them down quickly. As the hunting group arrived at their location, they analyzed the shooting lane that would give them the best opportunity for a fatal shot. Their client prepared by setting in on his rest and drawing his sights upon the most vulnerable part of the bear before slowly squeezing the trigger. The deafening roar of the hunting rifle echoed off of the hillside as the massive brown bear reacted to the impact. The bear immediately headed into the bush for cover and protection. The men were confident in the location of the shot, but not certain. As the light began to fade, they assessed the possibility of tracking a bear that they were not convinced was dead, and they decided to wait until the morning and take up the tracking then. After a night's rest, the men returned to the site of the hunt. They found the bear's trail and began to follow it cautiously. They were pretty sure it was dead, but in a situation like this, it is better to err on the side of caution than to charge ahead and cause the bear to run again or create an even more dangerous scenario. The bear trail meandered through dense patches of a plant called Devil's Club, which is a broadleaf bush that is covered in thorns. Devil's Club grows in thick clumps and effectively reduces visibility to just a few yards, creating an environment in which close-range encounters are nearly unavoidable. The bear's blood trail eventually emerged from the Devil's Club and rounded a low hillside. The men continued following the blood and track trail until one of them glanced a few yards up the hill above the trail they were on. The massive Bruin was laying there, dead. They walked up to the bear and noticed the giant bear was buried in moss and duff to the point where only his head poked out. His head was resting on the ground and his gaze stared down the trail the men were approaching on. This raised the curiosity of the men and they completely examined the blood trail they arrived on. The men were extremely surprised to follow the blood trail past the point where they were, then up the hill a short distance and back toward where they found the bear. This bear had set up an ambush over his own back trail and buried himself to conceal his location to catch the hunters by surprise to exact his revenge. The hunters had a deep chill creep up their collective spine as they realized the thoughtfulness the bear had put into this ambush. They pulled the corpse of the bear and it didn't yet have rigor mortis. For those of you who may not know, rigor mortis is a temporary stiffening on a dead body which occurs a few hours after death and lasts for several hours or days, eventually subsiding. The bear's body was still pliable and flexible, meaning that it had died within the last hour or so. It had concealed itself under the moss and duff and died while lying in ambush for the hunters, a handful of yards from the trail it expected them to approach from. An animal this calculating and vengeful that plans out a very sophisticated way to gain an advantage over hunters is nothing short of brilliant. Critics of hunters who think that it isn't fair to pursue this magnificent and intelligent predator have to admit that confronting any bear with lethal firepower is the only way to even the playing field against such a cunning and clever animal.